talk about this ID and a text editor. Basically, an ID is a lot different, uh, quite different than a text editor. We, I'm going to show you two types of um, two types of two types of uh, development environment. One is the ID, and one is the text editor. So you can obtain this ID called Appton Studio 3 uh, freely. You don't need to pay anything for the license. It's an open source software, and you can get the, all the features just by down, clicking on this download button. I'll be posting all the links, so don't worry. Just, just check out the description part of this video. Now, there is another um, development environment Perhaps there are two sorts of development environment. One is the ID and the other is the text editor. If you're planning to develop on Windows, you can choose uh, any of them. You can choose an ID or a text editor. Now the difference between a text editor and an ID is that uh, an ID gives you a debugger. An ID also gives you something called a compiler. If you are running if you are planning to uh, build a full-fledged website using this HTML, CSS, JavaScript and also server-side languages like PHP, if you are planning to do that, then it's ideal to uh, download an ID because when you run through a compiler, basically a compiler is a program that sits between you, uh, that sits between you and the uh, low-level machine language. So it takes your code, it then converts that code into machine language. Now, what I mean by machine language is that your computers don't actually understand any sorts of word. Computers can only understand um, binary digits. So the binary digits are basically zero and one. And it, computers will uh, would like to understand everything in terms of two, those two binary digits. So whenever you write a letter A on your computer, you might be thinking that, yeah, your computer might be uh, understanding that letter A. And perhaps that's a human language, but that's not easy to understand for a computer. What a compiler does, it will take that A and it will convert that to the machine language. It will be something of 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. It will be a string of 0 and 1s. So, and uh, the compiler will take that converted string of 0 and 1s, which is a binary word, um, and it will take that binary string of A to the computer, and the computer will understand that you, you, are, uh, you, are, you want to type in A or you want to read A. So the difference between a text editor is that a text editor does not have any sort of um, any sort of an ideal ideal environment to develop your code. You can just write your codes, and it won't provide you with any sort of debugger. It won't provide you with any sort of comprehensive file systems, and also you won't get any compilers included with your text editor. You can just write your code. It will. Uh, use its, um, I guess it's called intelligence. It will suggest codes, it will color your codes, but it won't tell you always where the mistake is occurring. So it's it's better to use an ID because if you make a mistake, an ID will promptly, uh, maybe it won't be uh, accurate always, but it will be accurate sometimes and it will promptly tell you where the mistake is occurring. If you're planning to develop on Windows, you can choose brackets as your text editor. If you want to go ahead with a text editor rather than an ID, then you can download brackets. It's also free. It's developed by ID, and you don't need to pay anything for the license. You can just download it. And also, if you want a, another lightweight program for Windows, you can choose uh, the Notepad Plus. But I'll be posting all these links, so don't worry. Uh, ch just check out the description below. Now you can choose Notepad++. It it's a lightweight program, and uh, you can also choose an App Tennis Studio. But I would prefer, uh, I would actually recommend that you use an App Tennis Studio because it's an 
it's a full-fledged ID with debugger with all it with its own FTP server. So an added advantage of using an ID is that it also has the advent uh, it also has the features of FT, FTP server. So an uh, so a text editor does not give you the features or give, it does not give you the advantage of using uh, uh, of FTP server. So uh, uh, FTP server, what it does, it you can actually sit on your local machine, and when you want, when you have finished building a website and you want to transfer those files, those files that you have um, that that are for the website, if you want to transfer them from your local machine to the remote remote server, then you can use. And you can use a program that's uh, that supports FTP or file transfer. So the entire abbreviation for FTP is file transfer protocol. So if you want to transfer that without just uh, logging in into your servers, you can directly do that from your commission. Just take that file and um, put that onto your FTP uh, program, and the program will do the rest for you. So, an FTP uh, uh, FTP program is also built into this Apton Studio, so you can take the advantage of using it. But on a text editor, you won't find that. So it's also an added advantage. So we talked about all those features, and remember that all of them are uh, free of charge. You don't need to buy any license for them. So you can go ahead and download them right away. Now uh, let's look at the let's look at how this text editor and the um, ID looks like. So you might be very curious about an HTML page. So I just created a small page. Also, it does not look that beautiful, but it's just to uh, demonstrate the concepts of HTML and CSS and how CSS is used to. Uh, provides styling for that for this entire page let me show you that now let's open up Aptima Studio so this is the basic HTML code I think it's if um, I think if you're looking at for this looking at the code for the first time you might be a little um, confused but it's not really hard to understand once you get the hold of it now uh, there are two ways to include a CSS a file into an HTML. As I've already told you, that uh, an HTML is used to create the skeleton of the website or the web page. Sorry. Um, so the skeleton means that you can create the layout of this website. Basically, the the layout won't look very beautiful. But to make it more beautiful, to make it more attractive, suppose if you want to provide a background color to your page like this, I have provided a background color of black, then you need to use CSS styling. Suppose you want to uh, change the font size of your uh, paragraphs, or you want to change the font family of your paragraphs, or you want to increase the font size of your heading, you will need to resort to using CSS stylings. You might even want to decrease the size of this image. So for that reason, you need to use CSS3 for your styling. Now, CSS can be included inside your HTML page. I've created an HTML page called basicwebpage.html. So um, every HTML page, as I've already told you, will always have the extension of HTML. So what I mean by the extension? An extension is something like, um, it always comes after a dot. You'll always find every extension occurring after the file name. This is the file name that I, uh, that I want to refer to. This, is, this has been defined by me. So you can actually change this name before the dot. If you want to name your file something like new file, then just go ahead and uh, name them as it is. But remember, if you want to 
if you want your browser to render your page, your web page properly,